Drum roll. You look good. Have you lost some weight? I've been trying over the years. You've pump, been pumping it's it. The, uh, I think your phone's blowing up. Oh, what the from Erie's own government access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host. Well, I'm surrounded by <laughs> John Steiner, Carl Anderson. And I'm Kaz Kwiatkowski, City Councilman, and we're... You're protected, Kaz. Yes, we Not are. surrounded, protected. Just like my Secret Service detachment. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you today. Good, you too. Well, we, we have to say that, uh, in all fairness, we intended to be on the air last week, but uh, our engineer had a family matter and he couldn't make it. So, you know, we're back, though. Without Mike, there is no show. Without Mike, there is no show. The show cannot go on without Mike. And, and I know he's watching, but we want to put him right here with the headphones. Yeah. A little booth. Right, like they do on a lot of the sports talk radio shows. Yeah. Where they That'd show be, the yep. producers and stuff like He's that. the guy that makes it work, that's for sure. Yeah, without yeah. him, there that's is for no sure. show. What's new, Cats? What's going on around town? Anything exciting? <sighs> There's a lot going on, but it's a lot of a lot of crazy things. It's all, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we dodged another snow bullet last night, it looks like. Yeah, they kind of scare us all the time. My son called me from out east, and he laughs because, you know, they announced Philly's going to get three to five inches of snow, and they already closed the schools down in Allentown area. Like, you know, we, around here, you know, and it's, uh, I remember I was in Pittsburgh one day, and they said, well, you're not going home. I said, why is that? He said, well, they closed the city down. I said, they did? I'm thinking, well, you know, it's happened where, you know, you drive and all of a sudden you find out they closed down I-79. Right. It happened on a rare occasion. It's like I call home and my mother said, no, oh, everything's okay. So I told the guy, it's not three to five inches don't stop it. Three to five feet. We Maybe. have a resolve in Erie, Kaz. Well, we're going to get there. We're tough. Go ahead, caller. See, you're back on the air. What do you mean? Well, the council meeting wasn't on. What do you mean? What do you mean on the replay? It wasn't even on the, during the, the council meeting. Really? Yeah, they had the goofballs from Harrisburg on. wonder what happened. You mean during the live? Well, we had a meeting, what, two weeks ago? It was your your uh, morning meeting, the 7th or whatever it was. And it wasn't on? No, they had, they had the, the flubs from the state, Fabrizio, Harkins, and Mazzaro. Oh, and it wasn't on live even, huh? Nope. I have to check why that was. And I don't even know if it's being replayed now or whatever. I'll, I'll check with our engineer after the show is done here. I was curious. To, uh, maybe Mike wasn't there or whatever. It could be, but... But, you know, it, it normally in the morning, the state capital is on for a while, the deal. But maybe they didn't flop over to you. They just run the whole show for the half hour. You mean there's still a state capital? <laughs> I, I don't get the paper anymore because it's a day late and it's so garbage. Well, well, I, I, I get it on Sunday and my mother, she buys it religiously and gives it to me, but eh, I mean... Why do you want to see yesterday's news tomorrow? I, I think if I, if I was on that editorial or that board they got, I would I would stay away from a lot of the national stuff the sports and everything, and I'd say, you know what, today people get it off the telephone, the Internet. You know, cover some local stuff. They, they don't have any local reporters that do it. I mean, I'd love to read about some of our people that are doing interesting things out of town, and you don't read about them until, you know, they go up there and they get a Grammy or something. They go, oh, oh yeah, you know, hey, now he's famous, so we'll cover him, you know. Right. Did you know a drone was uh, lost from Arizona from a fort? Who's that? An, an army drone. Really? Out of Fort Munch or whatever it is down there in, in Arizona. Fort Huachuga or something? That's it. And some guy found it in Colorado in a tree. <laughs> no kidding. A million dollar piece of equipment. Why? Well, I think they had that kind of range. And there was nothing, I seen nothing in the paper 
I, I went on the internet and found that. There's things we don't know about. Yeah. There's a lot of Probably stuff we don't lot. know about that the media is keeping away from us. Yeah. I remember I remember we used to talk about stuff during the 70s when I was in there. And it was all like, you know, you, you thought it was hocus pocus. And 10, 15 years later, you find out, uh, it was like the secret food we heard about. Yeah, well, you, you've heard of Hogan's Heroes, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's, what's funny is the other day I was reading about the, was it the Secretary... Flynn, what's he, Secretary of Defense? Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't even know how to activate the National Guard. A four-star general does not know how to properly call out the National Guard. And then you read about, you know, all these uh, messes that are happening now. But you know the problem out there, the people are fed up with politicians. They lie through their teeth. And they look at you in a straight face and they kiss the babies when they're young to get your vote, and once they are got your vote, they tell you to kiss their butt. Well, what's the number one objective of any politician? Why? I just fear any politician that's never put on a uniform, that all of a sudden becomes the next uh, Napoleon or Caesar, <laughs> and they know what they're doing, you know, like, you know, all right, we're, yeah, we're going to do this. Hey, come on. I think, you know, you know Donald Trump, the, you know, with him being in there now, I think... Uh, He's turned everything upside down, and people are pretty much, you know, I was watching CNN, and they're talking about how the uh, liberals are now becoming like the Tea Party was when uh, Obama was president. What, what happened with the military the other day? It was weird. I was reading about it, and it's like nobody knows what the other hand's doing. I'm going, yeah. oh, and that's down there. It's, it, it's a disgrace. Yeah, well, Carl's, Carl's explained to me before. You know, Carl, tell, explain. You know what we talked about. You know about the, the the swinging and why things get crazy. Well, I mean, the pendulum, the, the pendulum of politics is, you know, once once we get well, we, we really swing to the left, we swing to the right. Is the city going to go along with the, which way. the sons and get that deal done right? Well, here's here's the here's the thing in a nutshell. Building, but it's an ordinance down there. It doesn't say building in particular. Well, the, the administration has one viewpoint, okay, and, they, and they, they're they saying that uh, they're not going to, they're going to leave things to status quo. Council has not made a decision what stand we're taking. All we're saying is we want to look at the issue because our understanding, and I talked to two of the architects of that, and that was Curtis Jones and uh, uh, Jessica Kunso, who were very, uh, what do you call it, very uh, instrumental when they designed what they called the uh, waterfront zone where it had to go through an approval process. That So now there's a disagreement as to what's, what's considered construction or what's considered to be, and this is where, I, you know, we're sitting there as council, we're going, uh, you know, there's a danger that you can't allow... The Port Authority and the redevelopment, I mean, the Port Authority and the Convention Center do what they want to do. You know, there, there's a reason why when council passed that, that they, they wanted to have some control over what goes in there because, you know, the fear was a lot of people, you know, you had public outcry about high rises and. Yeah, but they weren't building a building. Huh? They weren't building a building. And it there, was a pathway. And there's the argument, but the argument is. Is that considered? Is that considered what do you call it? A, a, a development down there? You know, is you know you've already, can they just start running roads and determine what the project's going to look like before it gets going? And that the, that was the argument about whether that meets what council wanted to see down there. Well, council didn't have anything to say. Well, no, and that's what our argument. Our argument is that the way we read the the, the uh, ordinance is that council is. Even after the, we're supposed to. The planning commission reviews it, then put brings it before council. Right, and if we have a problem, you know. Well, I have a problem. I can't go down there and use that. Well, my problem was, and I asked them one question was, they they have a couple uh, life rings down there that are in the middle of that stone pile. Yeah, you, uh, what good is it? I mean, you can't even have a bench down there. Well, God forbid, and I'm not being, you know. God, God forbid a woman that's in high heels or some would 
or she had you know to walk across those stones or or somebody in a wheelchair if their grandkid fell in the water how would you get a wheelchair close to that thing you know, and they say, well, that was an oversight. Well, you know what? How do you have oversight? You, you corrected you know, before it is an oversight. I've, I've been around a lot of places. I, I don't know, maybe not as many as Carway, but I've been to San Diego, been to De- Wilmington, Delaware. I've been to New Jersey, Baltimore. Yep, Baltimore Inner Harbor, uh, what did I say, Peoria, different places, Chicago, Navy Pier. I've never seen, have you ever seen Stones? Well, they put stones down there for a simple reason, I think. They don't want certain people down there fishing. fishermen down there. They don't want, right, they don't want. And see, that goes to the public access part about, you know, the waterfront really belongs to the people. See, you know, the, that's why the Commonwealth protects that. The origin, the way this our city is set up, it, it's totally wrong, okay? When you go to the major cities, you know, the waterfront is public access. You have parks, you have walkways, you have this, you have that. But the thing is, is on top of the bluffs where, yeah. where, you're, where the, that kind of stuff that's down there, that stuff should be up on the bluffs. Well, that's what the San Diego, you ever been to San Diego, Carl? I have, actually. Have you? Yeah. You see what they did with their waterfront, yeah. right? You have, the, you have the park setting way down by the water. Then you have these little, I call them boutique stores. Mm-hmm. You know, one to two stories high where they right. sell. You can buy, like, little touristy stuff. Right. Then you got the road, I think, if I remember right, the highway. And then the hotels, the high-rises are on the other side. Right. So everybody's happy. Well, you see, know. what that's the problem. I mean. They th- want a gated situation. Yeah, yeah. and that's bad. I, I mean, mean, the problem is is that where Hammett and Gannon and all them, they're, they're non-taxable. And that's where we need to have our taxable properties. And the stuff on the Bayfront needs to be public access stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's the way, I mean, that's every normal city that's, you know, successful, that's the way that their city is mapped out. Would you agree, Carlin? I mean, you've been around a lot. Now they're going to have this barge, this floating liquor uh, barge. Yeah. You don't like that, John? No, I don't care. I, it doesn't bother me a bit. But the whole thing there is, how are they going to get access to it? Where are they going to park? Well, they actually presented council at the last meeting. Uh, if you want, John, I mean, it's available I, I might have kept mine. They, they I, I, I'll check my mail if you want a, want a copy. Uh, they presented a plan where they're actually got parking places in front of the. You, you come off the East Pier, and they're gonna. They have some parking available, and they said they're not gonna demand. They, they said that they're not gonna segregate it just for their business. Sure, they are. Well, they'll, they'll try a little bit, but they said they can't prevent anybody legally from parking there. But there is enough parking, they claim, for what they're going to do. Well, look up and down the line to the, the convention center and the hotel. They got spots for the people that are at a park or they got the ramp. Yeah, but they, they do have a parking lot planned for this business. I think they didn't they just hire somebody to do another plan for that area down there? For what? The, uh, for the, uh, I think it's the East, East Slip. Right? You know, they've had trouble marketing that. They've. At one time before the great downturn in the market, uh, what I call the uh, the Great Recession or the Minor Depression, you know, they had they were gonna there were two uh, where McAllister was. They were gonna build like a four-story structure that was gonna be a parking ramp surrounded by uh, buildings, so you couldn't see the parking ramp, and they were gonna run a canal through it. And then on the east side, there was gonna be a gated uh, what they envisioned ten to fourteen-story. Uh, gated uh, condo. Yeah, but nobody could get state and federal funds to do with the buildings, and nobody, oh, no intra- entrepreneur wanted to put his own money into it. Well, they were moving on it, and then the mar- when the market collapsed, that really hurt the project. And now, I guess, they're having trouble coming up with anybody to really develop it. I haven't heard, like, anything concrete on that. Oh, no, we need a new comprehensive plan. So the taxpayers can get stuck again. It <laughs> Wait, doesn't work. You know, the thing, got enough plans. The thing about yeah, the... I, 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 yeah, I really think we, we need to take the plans that we have, and, and everybody needs to work together on the plans instead Absolutely. of trying to create new plans. But the trouble is you got you got a plan from the county, a plan from the city, which the government demands we do. Then you got downtown did a plan. Yeah, they did a downtown, downtown did a plan with the, the mall down they had. 
Yeah, now you got to try to figure out how to put all these plans together. You know, I did. I read the Buki report, the plan that he put together. I, told, I hope you did because yeah, I like it. I think it's it's good. But I mean, there's a lot of holes in this plan. Well, there's holes in any plan. Well, I mean, he doesn't. First of all, he comes up with an astronomical figure. Yeah. You know, sixty-five million a year for ten years. Okay, and he tells us, well, as Carl knows, you know, don't don't plan an estate giving you any more money, maybe less. Right. Same thing with the feds. So he said. That means locally we got to raise, let's say, I'll just guess, 50 to 60, 50 some million, let's say, every year. Okay, so there's two options. We can raise taxes, which he said he estimated would be double what they are. Well, you can watch the footprints going out to Mill Creek and Summit. Yeah, that's not going to work. You can't do that. Yeah, no, so that's not he's work. saying that you can count private investment, which is, you know, Erie Insurance, Hammett. You know, those count. If they if they go out and they take some of the blight out, like your insurance is doing, they're they're going down and clearing out some of the blight in certain areas. Well, they got a guy who's going to take all the blight out, that new uh, enforcement officer. He's down to doing a, a great job in finding all these problems, but where's the money going to come to take care of these problems? Well, you know, legally under state law, uh, you're going to, John, you're going to be surprised. What we consider blight is not considered blight under state law. No. You know, you if the house is occupied, you can't declare it blighted. And re, Unless it becomes a... Back in those days, a 30-foot lot wide was the name of the game, and the, the lots were deep, but they were close and next to each other. Yeah, you almost had... The house has to be almost really in bad shape with people in there to declare it blighted. You know, I took a ride out in the lower... West Bayfront a couple of weeks ago. Pretty scary, huh? I mean, but on one hand, it was, but there is a lot of... Uh, there's some people down there trying their best. There's empty a lot of empty lots down there. They're where, trying to take care of them, but they're running into walls. We don't have a lot of money to tear down housing. Right. So, I mean, it's a... It's a pro, and here, people ask us a question. After we tear it down, why is there a pile of rubble there? Because they don't have enough room to build it. Well, we don't have any money to take the rubble away. It's really the home, uh, the landowner's responsibility. I think they've done a west on the lower west side. There's a lot of lots that have been cleaned up that but, can but there's be. There's a lot of work more to be done. No yeah. owns all property on the west side. Well, there's a lot of it is owned by people out of town that don't really care much. Yeah, and there's a, there's another big deal in Gannon College. Gannon. Yeah, you're right. You know, I was looking at where they're trying. They're talking about putting that. Uh, Big apartment building down there on the lower for west Gannon? side. I, it's not supposed to be for Gannon. It's supposed. You think to, it is? I think eventually it will be. Sure, it will be. Because what's going to happen is it's going to be nice at first, and they're talking about having um, seniors live there, and then people with, uh, uh, in, you know, so it's going to be like a section eight thing, and then they want to do the top of the uh, the top apartments are going to be, you know, market rate. But who's going to pay market rate? prices for an apartment when you've got, you know, all, everything else going on. I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I want to see, I like to see that kind of stuff. Well, they tried that market rate. But it's not responsible. Apartment right there at the Boston store, you got one up on 11th or 12th and French. They're all Section 8 pretty much now, John. They're all Section 8. I mean, there's, if there's you no money coming into town. The only way you can get market rate is, I think, down by the waterfront. Yeah, and they're letting that go. Uh, really, I think. Look at Holmes. I guess he's going to build a service center in that old lot that was going to be the coal and wonderful, wonderful project. I don't know if he's got a permit to build it or not yet. Underneath the old uh, deal across where that Miller Miller Brothers has a building, yeah. he bought the lot and they made it a parking lot. Now I understand they're going to build a service center there for the. Other vehicles, the Hondas or whatever. What can you do, John? At this point, we got to take whatever we can get on most. It, it's amazing how much Hallman's has expanded in that area. So, isn't it? Yeah. At least when Kellogg had the property, he was paying taxes. Yeah. Well, Hallman will too, though. Yeah, that's true. But how's uh, it going to be according to updated scale, or who knows? Well, uh, you know, if. The trouble in the area is, and, I, and I'll say this, and this is the whole area. People want to see all this stuff come, but the but the bottom line is, and I will repeat this number till till the day I die. 
The county population has not changed, statistically relevant, and what would you say, 30 years? Oh, at least. It's Been locked at 280,000. Yeah, it's just a shifting of population from the city out yeah. to the and also, In fact, it's actually gone down a, a thousand or so. And you can't get to, you know, people say, why don't we have this? Why don't we have that? Why? You know what? Ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen because we don't have the population. To no, you don't have the population, and nobody wants to pay their fair share. They want to go along for the right. Oh, well, you're right. I mean, that's, you know. You go to, I mean, I hate to pick on Allentown, but it's not just about the city of Allentown. It's about the area. And whether, you know, people, well, they were lucky they got New York and Philly. doesn't matter what they got. They just got it. And, you know, that's why, you know, business, I learned this from my old boss of mine. Business goes where business is. That's right. And just like they're, they're moaning about the new parking meters. How are they going to get there and whatever? And are they, is there going to be a test run? Well, we, we, we've we been working on this for, I, I was liaison on to the Parking Authority for at least two years, and we've been working on this about how to how to unroll it, and it is a project because, you know, and there, somebody has to pay for it. Everybody wants, in Erie, everybody wants everything for free. Yeah, and, and it's going to cost. Yeah, I mean, nobody wants to, to put this new technology in. Like uh, Mr. Massing said the other day, he has to tear bricks along State Street. That were put down decoratively. You know, somebody has to pay for that. We have to take and put kiosks up. We have to upgrade the system to be able to take the data, you know, the yeah, computers. Yeah, you've got to take credit cards, debit cards, charge I, cards. I mean, it's going to be nice, but, you know, everything comes at a price. Didn't the city get a grant, a decent that, grant for some? Is it going to they're pay They're trying off? to get one. Then, you know, you might be cutting a, a dead horse putting those new meters in. Because people won't want to use them, especially with, they don't even want to use the parking lots they have down there. No, but hey, you know what? We haven't got to the point here yet where you have to depend on public transportation. Do, I wonder if what they have those kiosks. Is that a twenty-four public hour? Transportation going constantly, but it's empty. Yeah. Hey, I better cut you off, John. We gotta. We'll get complaints. You're all right. Hey, call back, though, if nobody... Okay. What are you saying, John, about the kiosks? Yeah, are those, like, 24-hour, you know, do you have to pay for parking 24 hours with those? Probably because not. They would be... It still depends on the ordinance of the community. Yeah. Some some are 24-hour, but it would depend on what our ordinance is. Because it seems like, you know, at, at nighttime, I mean, we were down State Street this past... It's, it's packed down there on Well, Saturdays. they're talking about... They approached council about possibly, you know, working around that. Yeah. About changing those times, because... Because the meters stop after 6 p.m. Uh, on the street, but not in the not in the lot. Well, right? nobody on the street. Yeah, on the street. on the street, nobody enforces them. So it's well, like, no, because it's six o'clock. It's free parking after six. Yeah, but in the parking in the lots and the ramp. Oh yeah, it's 24. Yeah, but on the streets, uh, you know, there, there's there's a chance to get revenue. A lot of those people that come from they're from they're not from the city. No, a lot of them are from the county. They all like coming in. The minute here. we start talking, you, you hear these things about. Oh, you know, just like when we, we did the 3% amusement tax. You know. you know, a lot of people, there's a city versus county mentality killing us. And, and what did it say in the Buki yeah, report? Killing we us. need to get over that, for sure. Absolutely. Go ahead, caller. Yes, uh, I live on Marion Street. Where? Marion Street. Yes. Right down from you, Cass. Yeah, I know where it is. And I'm just wondering why we can't get a snow flower. Yeah. You don't get one? We do every now and then, but I called him up here the other day when it was bad on with ice. Yeah. He said the snowplow was up there already. I'll tell you the truth. I mean, I'll look into that because I'm surprised because not that we, you know, not that I get any better treatment than you do, but I've been, I've been watching. I can hear him all night working all through Southeast Erie, you know, on a couple occasions. but. Huh? Davison is always there. I'll check it. It's difficult for them sometimes to get the big plows through those those smaller side streets that have parking. Well, mine's outside. pretty small though, but yeah. you know, if, but, one per, if one person is parked <coughs> illegally, the whole block doesn't get it. I'll check on that for you. What you're in? What, what, what area are you talking about? Like from 38 to? Uh, up, on, up on the hill on Marion Street. You mean up near Grandview? Uh, we down from Grandview. Okay, about what what area, like? 
From 42nd to Grandview. Okay, I'll, I'll check and see. In fact, some night I'll just take a ride up there and take a look. I think hey, come up today. You'll see snow on our on our road. Because usually, uh, you know, they've been they've been pretty good about going through uh, like Pennsylvania, Stanley, all the down where I live, and. You know, I assumed they were going through the whole east side like that. Well, I think they do the hill. I mean, when they, whenever they go out, they do the hills, they do the main main drags, and then they hit the side streets when they can. But I know, I mean, they have to do the hills. Or I mean, you know, a lot of accidents and serious injury. They uh, they don't like to use salt on some of those hills because that's that reclaimed material. Yeah. But uh, they, see, we get we get paid by nobody knows this. A lot of people we get paid by the Commonwealth to do. 38th Street and Pine Avenue. Because they're roots. Yeah. Per, per eight, did you, what streets? Well, like 38th Street, Pine Avenue. 26th. Uh, yeah, the state highways. We get paid. We're in Mill Creek. You'll see their their trucks not hitting those streets. Right. But then so, you, tra you trade it off with the state for the Bayfront Highway, right? Yeah. The state does the Bayfront Highway. I think they do, yeah. Yeah. You could have made a swap there. But I'll check into that, okay, ma'am? All righty. I thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because what they do is they, I, I like the, the current method. The guy, we, the gentleman that's doing it now, it used to be we stayed a lot on 38th Street, almost one whole shift. Now he'll tell his guys if they got it pretty clean, you know, and the snow stops, start hitting the side streets early. Because yeah. when you live on a side street, you got used to the fact it wasn't going to get plowed till late at night. Right. So what happened was you had to go to work, come back from work, and you had a mess. Right. At least now they're trying their best to, you know, clear them out a little bit. I like to plan. Yeah. Well, but I think the guys do a pretty good job. It's tough. I mean, and like on the east side, you're right. We we don't have restricted parking, and people all have driveways, but they don't use them. Right. So then all of a sudden it doesn't take much to – And we well, got – Once those starts piling, and then if you you can't get close to the, the curbs, the streets shrink. And see, there's no curbs up there. It makes it, it tough even that. It makes it difficult for those There are no curbs up there either. Yeah, like, I mean, a lot of places where they have the odd even, all it takes is one person to not have their vehicle moved. And, yeah. we, you know, we don't tell people, you know, we're, I mean, the city just. Are you pull this crap in big cities? I, I'll, they'll Phil have you down to. Philadelphia and those other oh, cities. They have. They have uh, they're on Flat, flatbeds. Yeah. They roll in and they just take them one by they, one. We have, we have two towing companies, so it's not a lack of not being able to do it. Yeah. There's just not a will by anybody. It's just, to do it's it. them being polite and, you know, not wanting to do it. I mean, I can understand some people might forget or might slip or something. I mean, during a major snowstorm, you have to do it. You know, that, you know they don't post streets as much as they used to, though, too, I notice. Because my street would get posted. Yeah. And uh, last couple well, this year, we haven't really had any major events. But uh, last year, it didn't get posted, and then it got plowed. And then what happens is uh, it freezes. So you can't plow. So it's like constant ruts and stuff. And that's why people say, why are they going so fast for them? If you ever plowed. Yeah. If you ever plowed your life. Yeah. It's not you got to have the momentum. It's not fun. I mean, no, it's tough. I mean, it's tough on the body, what they go through. It's I mean, fun for about an hour. Yeah. And then the novelty wears off, and you're you're looking at you know your eyes are blinded by white snow. Right. I mean, and play, you know the they, they, they don't boxes want, blend in, and all of a sudden I'm sure they don't want to plow you in, you know, and block your driveway and throw it on your. You but know, you, you know, but you're not supposed to throw sh snow into the street. Well, people say you want to lift a plow. Could you imagine if if you did that, you'd have to stop at every driveway. You have to know where they are first. Lift it up, drop it, then push. You got no momentum. My uncle used to work for the streets for, he worked 30 years, 35 years, and he retired a couple of years ago. But, uh, you know, I've sat in a plow, and I've hit a pothole in a plow. He took me out, I don't know, he's retired now. So that it's plow okay. blade jumps? The truck jumps, not just the blade itself. When I used it to, is like hitting, I, it's unbelievable. You know how many plow blades I tossed when I worked for the Parking Authority? When I was a young man in college and I had to go out a couple of nights? Are you ready to admit that? <laughs> yeah, well, you had to. I mean, you hit it. So guess what? You have to put it back on. You have to get out there, press the thing down. I mean, we're not talking the plows like these guys got, you know. But you know, I had a. Uh, I went outside one day, and the uh, you can't see where the grates are. You know? My mirror, I got cru it got crushed. I mean, it was the heavy snow, 
and my mirror got shattered and, and you know and I called the city I'm like you guys going to pay for that they're like well after you pay your your deductible we'll take Payton care of the rest that, and I'm like but my deductible is $500 <laughs> And they were like, okay, when you pay the deductible, we'll pay the yeah, rest. That's, that's kind of what they do. So in other words, yeah, yeah. In other words, no. In other words, we, you know, we pay, at, at, yes, sir, after you pay your deductible, we'll I pay. I think that's some kind of immunity thing. They yeah, do. yeah. I mean, if, for every cracked windshield, they, you know, they blame the city for it. You know, anything that went wrong with a vehicle, you know, the raw, you know, anything that happened. The city did it. The city did it. I, I remember the famous story. I was a young guy, and they were uh, Remember the old gold staff store? Oh, yeah, I remember that. On State Street? Yeah. Some woman slipped in the parking lot. And, it, you know, the big guys from Harvard and Yale, the lawyers, you know, they're down there, you know, they're going to sue the heck out of the parking authority. <laughs> right? And the lawyers are getting that. Well, where'd she slip? Right there. The guy said, you sure? Yeah, right there. Look, positive. Uh, can't you hear me? Well, yeah. Okay. Right there. We agree? Okay. Not our lot. <laughs> Long to the gold stamp store. Everybody saw, you know, dollar signs like, okay, it's a city, it's a, yeah, right. the authority, we're going to. I never forgot that. Everybody, they want to get paid, you know. Everybody you still have any items left in your house from the gold stamp store? <coughs> I got some. You know, I found some books the other day, actually. We actually found some of my kids one time. They, they said, what's these green stamps in this book? Or remember the TV stamps? Or yeah. Green it was shirt. gold. We blue. should ask the callers. The, the, is anybody out there today calling in? Do, do they have any, any items that were at the from the green stamps? Store? I still have my football helmet that I got from one. You do? Yeah. Carl's a coin. He's a big coin guy. Coin? Yeah, he drags me into the coin stores, and he's telling me, showing me this and showing me that. I just want to take them and spend them. <laughs> I think of all the Buffalo nickels I spent when I was a kid. <laughs> My grandfather used to give them to me, and I said, "Oh man, standing Liberty quarters and all that." And he's got a nice good old days. He's got a nice coin collection. You don't, know. don't brag about it. Well, I it's don't not know. that nice. I mean, no, it's, <laughs> he's not, yeah, he's not retiring on it, but he's got me at the coin store looking around for things. Just a hobby, my son. My son does. It's he, a good hobby, but you know, like, you got to really get into it. <laughs> Yeah, hey, coins. I remember it. people come up to you know, you got any wheat pennies or? I like baseball cards. I collect. Used to collect. You'd love to see cards. my collection. Oh really? As long as my son now. You're officially. A baseball guy. Yeah, baseball football too. Guy? Oh, I got Jim Brown's rookie card. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah, my son has all my cards now. He Is he's the official care. They're still at my house, but he's a carekeeper. Are they in what condition? Are they in? Con well, in unlike way. unlike today's youth, they never look at them. Yeah. They left them sealed in the boxes. Oh, really? Yours is still still in the box? No, I don't. I don't believe in that. Uh, I mean, do you have it in a pla? Is it in? You know, you get plastic that you put cards in. Some are in there, but a lot of them were. When we were kids, we you actually had them on the tire of your bike. Only the bad ones. <laughs> That's Eddie, a spoke. Eddie Brasso. Eddie, Eddie Brasso wound up in there, or Gino Simoli. Not Mickey Mantle or Willie Mays. No, they didn't. No, that only the scrubs got. Yeah, they were in your. But scrubs. you know what's funny was when we. Uh, we used to actually carry them. You know, we'd look at them, we trade them. You know, right. long before the days of the books, that was we made our own value. Right. We knew we knew what them. We knew what they were worth. Yeah. You know, we didn't trade like Mickey Mantle for. That was before the Beckett came out. Yeah, before Beckett, Beckett came out. Yeah. Now they, you know, kids now they take the boxes. They it's an investment. They lock them up. They don't even know what's in there. Right. Some of them they don't even open. Yeah. No, they don't. And I'm going. Well, yeah. Well, they sell the you know like the packs with the uh, the bubble gum in it. There's <laughs> the gum's still in it. I mean, yeah. I mean, and those are from like I used to. Well, I was I'm a '70s guy. I, was, I got tobacco cards. Really? Yeah, I, I lucked out. There was a when I was young, somebody was selling them one time, and I, my buddy and I, we used our lawn mowing money and our snow shoveling. Yeah. Bought a whole. Wow. Oop! What happened there? Oh, they must have hung up. Call back. Well, what do you what do you see now? Anything going on? I think there's a lot of exciting things happening in here. What do you want to talk about? I mean, uh, we've got Hammett doing a major expansion. Erie Insurance. Yeah, and Vincent major, now is going to have and one. Now, and now uh, St. Vincent. Now major, the public, major expansion. The public will get mad because those will be tax exempt. But a lot of them are pretty much on the footprint of the property yet. 
You know, the tax exams, I get it. But we got to start creating jobs. But, I am sick. I, but, him, but in fairness to those two, it, it, you, when you brought it up, okay, Hammond and Vincent do pay one half. Okay? Yeah. And, you know. The, the key is that and some we of have property, an open relationship that, that we can get them to negotiate the fees. And some of their property is taxable. People don't understand that. Right. It's not, not everything they own is they give us half of what they don't have to pay on. Plus, you're right about the jobs. When you when you think about it, the only way to grow this county, when you look at your insurance and they want to make this, what an educational facility too, you know, besides the headquarters, you know, they keep talking about they want to bring all their agents here, you know. Right. People got to read. It's only we got to create. You know, we're the days of hoping. You know, U.S. Steel's coming here or GM. I don't know. You know, you, I mean, well, I mean, the, the nonprofits when when they're doing the, the positive, proactive things, making capital investments in the community, and creating more jobs. We've got construction people working. We've got but here's the new, bad new employees working uh, at at these organizations, and they in turn live in our community and pay taxes. Right, but here's the bad part: the archaic laws that exist in the Commonwealth. Okay. I once, when Tippy, what was his name, Skippy Canavino was treasurer, I challenged him. And I, I don't mean this in absolute numbers. I meant it in the spirit that I intended it. Would you rather have 1% of the Mill Creek Mall, right, or 1% of your insurance? You know what I mean by that comment? We don't get the sales tax at all. I mean uh, the employment tax. Right. So all the jobs we create, for the most part, most of the people are at City Hall, most of the people at the school district, mm -hmm. a lot of people at the courthouse, a lot of people that got hospitals that got good jobs, they don't live in the city as a rule. So here's where the system breaks down. Okay, we got all the stuff here, but we get no real estate tax for the most part. We don't get the income tax, because that goes to domicile tax, it's where you live. We definitely don't get the real estate tax. I, I said that earlier. And we don't get the their purchasing power. So it's really, a, I, I mean, while I agree with you, Carl, it's great for the area, bad for the city. And well, but the, the city has to, we, we have to create an environment to attract those people back into the city. But they don't want to come here for, I can remember when the city wasn't so bad, okay, when it wasn't, you know, and you still had... Uh, you still had Glenwood, you still had South Shore, then you had the mini, the area around uh, uh, Green Garden Green there. Garden, yeah. That was the, the mini uh, nice area. The Chautauqua. You Chautauqua know, people, Boulevard there was area. a stepping stone to the next step. Okay, people were starting to move out because they didn't like the taxes. Okay, they loved going out there where, like what people are moving to Summit now, why? Because you, you don't pay much in township taxes. Because of the casino. There's got to be a way that we can make the city attract. I mean, yeah, part of it is, you know, now you got the blight, but that's because. In order to fight blight, okay, you have to have jobs that, are, other than family dollar yeah. and uh, Dollar Tree uh, tourism jobs, you, you, in order, I'm not, somebody's not going to put money into their house if they don't have a job to do it. But that goes back to, now you're talking about. Washington and Harrisburg, you know, I mean, you almost say in Harrisburg, I mean, in Hershey, you almost lost the chocolate place. You almost lost the, in York, you almost lost the motorcycle, Harley Davidson, I think, right? You know, why? Okay. Because they're going to different states. Well, well yeah. Well, a lot of it has to do with our statewide corporate tax, the, the way in which the state uh, goes after the, the corporate tax. Uh, it's... I mean, that, that's the problem. There's, I mean, but there's a big loophole in the state tax where a lot of p big businesses are the, paying their share. The Delaware? You got it. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, is this President Kotowski? Yes. This is your friend, Joseph Curlett. Yes. Are we on the air? Yeah, well, sure you are. You know that. It says right on there we're live. Who called you before, dude? Pardon? Never, I never called this number before. Mm -hmm. Well, you're on now. Then Citizens Hotline. 
Right. Did you get my email regarding you providing the dates that the chief and I met? Dates and times and where? You need to talk to the chief. Well, no, you said it. Yes, and he told me he talked to you. Was that true or false? Well, I tell you, you did he talk? Did he talk to you or did he not? Hell no. What you calling him a liar? Uh, I don't. Think well, I think we're going to cut you off. Yeah, Sorry about that. Me. This is not a show to be. This is for concerns, not personal agendas. I mean, I, it's unfortunate, you know. He just I called the chief a liar. I don't believe it. But. And then he's swearing. I mean, I, I you know, Kaz, I witnessed the uh, city council meeting where he came in. I mean, he, he's a concerned citizen, but he's totally out of control. He was totally out of control, and he was inappropriate. And I thought you handled it handled it well. I mean, you're an elected official. I mean, you shouldn't have to put up with. There's 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 a difference between respectable banter and uh, listening to people's opinions and wanting to be supportive of the things they're saying. But what I witnessed that night at this council meeting, you shouldn't have to. I do. mean, I walked down to the chief's office. I asked him. Now. And basically, he's saying the chief is lying. I, I don't buy that. Right. I've known Chief Bowers and Chief Dacus. Uh, you know. You know, you get Mr. Um, McAdory and um, the other gentleman. What's his name? Uh, uh, yeah. He comes every week. and it, It'll be a tip of my tongue. Yeah, I know. I know who he's. And he uh, comes in. McDonald. Mr. McDonald. I even took Mr. McDonald for a ride in my car. You know, he had some complaints. I said. I took him, you know, we drove around his area, and I have to agree with him. You know, he These guys to... come in, and they, they, you know, they stand there, they give their opinions, and then, you know, they're heard. And, I mean, they do have, I mean, I think you guys do listen to them. I mean, but for somebody to ver verbally attack you, to be calling you at home, I mean, you know, I've heard of other Paul where people go to their house in the middle of the night. I mean, uh, there's a, there, there's a responsibility that you have as an election official, but some people get a little carried away, and I didn't appreciate the way he was talking to you that night, and I definitely didn't appreciate it. I knew where that conversation was going, so, I, you know, you did the right thing by well, ending it. So let's get back to what we were talking about. Yeah. I, you know, how do we create jobs? And that, you know, that, there's a, there is a... Uh, uh, here's, the, here's the problem, Cass. We had different ideas, but nobody wants it. Everybody's got the not in my backyard mentality. Well, that's true. They, but then again, the way that uh, uh, John Elliott, what was the name of that? What's the name of that group that they were with the county? Um, was it the Velabiri or what was that? Remember? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. He, he was working on the the projects in the West yeah. County. Yeah, he went to. Uh, they went and they bought the property in Harbor Creek and tried to shove it down Harbor Creek's throat. With you know, he go, he had it all set up and then decided to go to the people and say, "Okay, what's the wrong way of doing it?" You can't do it that way. That's not gonna. You know, we but, actually. But the thing is, Kaz, I do have to say that elected officials don't create jobs. They don't. Uh, elected officials create an environment. What did I always create say? jobs? Carl, you have you, and, ever, and you, you heard me say this? And that that's where the the elected officials, the city and the county, all of us need to work together. Yep. Be on the same page, it, and promote an environment. I actually, during, when that, LA, that gives the confidence to business owners to to create an environment to create jobs. In order for that to happen, it's going to be and it's going to take unprecedented relationships. Well, the school board cast. If the schools go down, and nobody forget the people when they look when they're sitting at their desk and looking at things, there's no education, forget it. But people are really, during during the Elliot's reign when that happened. Yeah. And it was obvious Harbor Kirk didn't want it. Right. We had a meeting and you know, we met to discuss what the, it wasn't anything we were voting on. We just got together and said, you know, you know, they asked us, would would you want it in the city? And I said, absolutely. Yeah. And we even approached, and they didn't want to hear about it. Who didn't want it, John Elliott? Yeah, because see, that's the problem. We had we had a couple of representatives that actually had guys walk the tracks. We explained to them that you have the in the city. We already had it set up. Yeah. You know, when you think about it, Wall Street would be one of where, where the uh, old golf. Well, yeah, I mean, call frames. I mean, there's it would it would have taken a little work on their behalf. Yeah, but we could we didn't like this the project because I don't think we would have got to kickback. Isn't Savakio Park? Is that open, Carl? Still, do you know? Have you? Yeah, 
for the empty in there. I mean, we have that. And that was brought up that you have an empty park right by there. And Carl's right. I always said this. Politicians are famous for cutting the ribbons. Yeah. I brought this here. I brought Walmart. Handing, I brought, out, handing checks. But did you ever see anybody there when G's announcing their closing? Shipping out, I, yeah. You ever see one get up there and go, no. uh, it happened on my watch. See, well, and that's the key. We, we have to create that environment. We have right. to know. The business owners need to know that Erie is open for business. And, and it does come down to what do we have to offer? I mean, there's Absolutely. If everybody across the country is competing for these I mean, same businesses. Let me against everybody. You know, this is Carl Anderson and John Steiner. John Steiner. <laughs> but Glad to be with you today, yeah. I guess. You know, you're right about that because, like Smith Provision, they've come to us for help, you know. We have some we have some programs we can implement. You need, I mean, supporting the local small businessman huge. We have to do well, that. Well, yeah, when you. But when it, we have to go out, we and Carl's, you know, working together, devise a, a, a strategy to go out and bring something here. Well, here's what I always argued about. I call it the shotgun approach. We got all these agencies firing a shotgun out there, trying to hit some where you really need a bullet. Okay. You got to identify something. I, I I remember I brought up one day. I said, "There's one movie theater in the whole county." All right. Unbelievable. You know we. I have, mean, you know, but, but hey, or you look at the type of businesses that have come here, and why don't we go there and say, "Hey, we'd like to have you here. Why aren't you going to come here? Okay. You know, tell us why, and then we'll work it." You know, we have. Well, but let, look at some of the the assets that we do have. Yeah. I mean, we we have the water. We we yeah. have a we, we have get a, unused sewer system right now, yeah. and, and we have a skilled workforce. Yeah. You know the, the people of Erie are hardworking and and have a resolve, a, a, a pride in the work that they do. I mean, everybody knows that they have relatives or friends that have moved to the south. Everybody knows that if if you go to the south, if you move down south, you you instantly get a job because they know that you've come from a, a hardworking environment where where people. Uh, care about what they're doing and and have a work ethic he's touched this them. is what we need to to be promoting out in to the rest of the country we have we have water you know I, and i talked to carl about this all we have water and i'm you know and i'm watching the news and I, you know there's even the, the top 10 uh part uh, cities or parts of the country with no water drought okay mm -hmm. why aren't we marketing what we have here there I mean, we, we, they're not going to come to us. According to everybody, we're one of the snowiest cities. That's what we're known as, the snowiest city on earth, one of the top ten. That's 10. true. It was just listed. We are the eighth. Then they used it as an asset. We are the, there, there's a positive to this. It, that, right. It's an asset. And the positive is we, we have, have water. We have water. We are the eighth. That's what we're known as. It was in the, I, was, I, I saw a story. We're the eighth snowiest city in the world. We really? have water. Yeah, it was just I saw it the other day. And we don't want to sell our water away to them. We want to market to them to come here to the water. Right. Why do people come up from Pittsburgh? They got water the down lake. there. Right. The but lake. they like to put their boats in the deep they, water. They right? Enjoy the lake. They like that deep water. A people bit. in Pittsburgh, they love Erie. Major, you know, they come up here. This is where I mean, a lot of the boat owners and a lot of the people they're they're from Pittsburgh. Well, yeah, because our problem is, and I've said this for a long time. You get out east, and either got misconceptions or we don't market heavy out there. I mean, you come over here. We don't market any. We're, we don't even market on I ninety that we have press Kyle. Because I laugh, you know, you go in one of our things, and the first thing you see now this side of the state, right, is uh, Philadelphia, the Amish country, the Poconos, right. You go over there, and you really have to look hard to find an eerie thing. We don't I think you really have to look hard to find an eerie thing over there. You do. Well, I mean, yeah. No, you really. Yeah, have to you look know, hard the other day, I not thought, there. Carl, you're you're into history, right? Yep. I was sitting there watching a movie, trying to remember which which one I saw. I'll hold my thought. Go ahead. I had to call back on that marketing the water deal. Yeah, go ahead. The biggest problem there is it's fluoridated. The second biggest problem is our chamber. All they want is their six-figure salaries. They don't want to do anything to promote jobs. The one thing you just said, the, the fluoride, remember when that, yeah. uh, it's going to save everybody's teeth. and duh, duh, Nobody even drinks it anymore. Everybody drinks bottled water. Well, you, you could have bought pills for every kid, you know, yeah. and given them like a you know, voucher. They used to give fluoride 
tablets. Yeah. And now all the there's enough runoff of natural products that go into like fluoridation. You know, you got your aluminum, your waste, and all that. Well, it's true. It's a cost to remove those. How, how much would it would it cost to remove the fluoride? I don't know. From the water system. All you got to do is stop adding to it. That's what I would think. Well, you have to. But it can't be that easy. There's No, they spend millions of dollars for filters and everything else. The, the, the citizens told them not to. Filippi told them, put it in, and he controlled the water authority. Yep, and got the votes. you could easily have given vouchers to parents that wanted it, you know, for the same amount of money. And you could go off and buy a jar of fluoride tablets. Back then, though, they, you know, no, everybody, there was no such thing as bottled water. Nobody started paying for bottled water until after everything went in there. Yeah, now people are, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, there was, everybody drank, you know, a pitcher of water, and then you'd put ice in it, like the good old days. Uh, I don't even drink the water. I have a filtration system where I make my own water. Right. Actually, you know, the, the authority, I've seen some of their bottles of... Uh, they have some water they take out on the road with them. And it's not fluoridated. Well, it's, it's right out of our system. You would have to take the fluoride. And, and they, take it, they take it right to these uh, seminars and, you know, they tout Erie's water. But, you know, that's what we need to do. Like when we have a, what do you call it, when we have a uh, convention here, you know, pass out a couple of why don't we Coke have and bottles, Erie everybody. does have some of the oh, best water. I, I thought fluoridation was a medication, and they're, they're medicating the people. I thought you had to have a prescription to prescribe fluoride or whatever. Well, I don't know. It comes in toothpaste. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I want to comment real quick on the coin deals. The last good coin I bought, I bought from Leon Dreyfus. Oh, man. When he was on 7th Street. I bought it from Minetta Cooperman, which was his sister-in-law. She was a teacher at East. And I bought a bunch of coins for him, from him in the way back. I think back in about, um, I want to say 58 or 59, and I still have it. It's a double 55 die penny. Somebody, That's a good one. What is it? What year? Dub, double. Double. Die, Double 1955, die, 1955, brilliant red. You had that. He still has it. I want. You know what I want to see, John? What's up? I want to see that your communion money. They said that should be in the museum. I still have it. I've got a 1923 <laughs> silver dollar. It's in caps. It's it's rated, and I my dad and my mother gave me that way back when. Do you may you know I, it's funny. My my grandkids found them. They said, what are those things? And I said, we used to actually get one, like on a birthday or Christmas. Peace dollar. Yeah, when, when that met, well, I mean, that was like a big deal, a buck back then. Oh, you know. I said that you should have been a V, but it was the other way around. Then. <laughs> the V was supposed to be the U. <laughs> when, I, when I was a young kid. About baseball, I have a Raleigh Fingers signed autograph ball in a capsule. Nice. Wow. When, it was a promo deal. And I, I had Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio, Mike DiMaggio, and my mother give a bunch of them all away. But I got all the mix. Yeah, I had to still, I had to watch. My mother was after my collection. I think Mick, one of Mickey Mantle's rookies is one of the, one of the top uh, worth wise as far as what they're worth. I think Honus Wagner. Yeah, that 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 one is on my cigarette pack. I have that in the vault. I got some of those cigarette cards. You got to see those suckers. Yeah. They're like hand drawn? Yeah. When, when I was young and I, uh, I would collect coins more. more I used than... to win all kinds of baseball cards because I put a little lead on the bottom of mine <laughs> when I flipped them. There, there, there used to be a guy at uh, 10th and uh, Reed. 10th and Reed? A coin store uh, right next to the Ro Rosebud Flower Shop. And uh, I'm sure he's, he's passed by now, but of course that's. Reed? Tim Thompson? No, ne next to the rosebud. Yeah. The, the gentleman lived. He and his wife lived in the back. They lived in the house, and they had the, the storefront in the in the front. Oh, I used to get a bunch of stuff from Joe. You remember Joe's Archery down on Wayne Street there? Oh yeah. He made a bunch of arrows for me. I still have them. I cedar arrows with the broadheads. I'm a I'm a, a miser collector from way back when. <laughs> have a great day, guys. See you, John. Thanks, John. The Niagara. 
I'm watching this movie and I'm thinking, we should use that ship in some of the Hollywood movies. We should be out there promoting our waterfront. You know. They hung up. They hung up. I didn't hang up. Call back, please. Um, oh, you guys want to say something? Go ahead. No, go ahead. You're good. We're almost out of time, actually. I want to say one thing. Thursday, I think it's Thursday. It's Carl's birthday, Kaz. So I got, we got to wish him a happy Are birthday. You old, yes, sir. yes, we do. It's the big five zero. Oh. <laughs> That's only a date. No, it, it is. I mean, is that why you guys brought me on the show to <laughs> yeah. let everyone know I'm going to be fifty? We got to wish you a happy birthday, publicly happy birthday. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. put a poster. Have you have you seen this guy? Yeah, right. Show pictures from high school. Yeah. We're looking for. He'll be on a milk carton. Him and his family went to see Blood, Sweat, and Tears over the weekend. Did you? Yeah. He, he said it was pretty good. It was a good concert. Where did you see him? Uh, they were at uh, Salamanca. Up there? Yeah. He said nice was... we can get him at our place, huh? I, I mean, they put on, you might not like their music, or maybe, maybe you don't know a lot of their music, but the musicians were first class. I mean, I mean first class, class musicians. Group, I think there was three, two or three, yeah. That's good, because they're, they're, they're pretty old. Because they're celebrating their 50th anniversary uh, this year. Way too. back when they used to have the... Uh, a place on McClellan, you know, it used to be a chatterbox and all that. And yeah. They used to bring in old groups there once in a while, and I, I'd sit back there, my sister worked there, and I'd say, how many guys are original? Eh, one, two, <laughs> you know. As long as they sing the songs. I mean, you know, at, at that age, I mean, it's going to be hard to keep everybody. I, you know, like even when the Beach Boys came to Erie, they were still yeah. pretty, pretty tight. I saw the Beach Boys, yeah. But, you know, it... I think that uh, I was down at Disney one day and I looked and they had these, they always have these old groups down there. Our casinos starting to do some boxing and different other. Ever things. since we El Dorado casino, so ever since El Dorado bought it, they changed a little bit. And we don't do concerts very much at well, our. Well, they casino. got to. I think. See, if they're, you know, when you go down like, to Bethlehem one day, that's what yeah. they got good entertainment. You know, yeah. Sal Manca does. I mean, you look at yeah. they bring in Herman's Hermits or somebody that you know. He did, you know what? I know he's old, but you know what? They bring the old school guy. It's good for, you know, that's that's their market. It's the old school folks, you know? Yeah. And, you know, the older guys and girls come in and do the slots and, you know, listen to a little bit of music. Carl said it was packed. Where it's do they, where they do it? night there? Where do they do it up there? They, they have a showroom. They do? Mm-hmm. Very big or? Oh, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's a good size showroom. Not as big as a convention center, like? No, no. I mean, like that one room or? No, I, I'd say 20, 2,500 capacity. Oh, really? You can put that much there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, what I didn't did, realize what did they fit in that? Yeah, uh, it was a sold-out concert. Where we went to the box on the one night. How much they fit in that one at the convention center, do you know? That was me and you, Kev. Huh? That was you and I that went for the boxing. How big do you think they could be? Oh, uh, I'd say. That room is smaller than that, though? That's, no, I think his is bigger. I think they could probably fit That's about 1,000 people where we were. I never saw it up there. i got to take it right up there. Yeah, I think that... Uh, it's good for the you know the, for the older folks to go and see you know, and then they get to eat dinner and spend the day there and stuff. But Carl's is he fifty years old? Is that considered an older folk now? Or what's what? What's well, the kids? <laughs> I'm still not. I'm still not uh, what's that thing in the, eligible for AARP? He doesn't have a. He doesn't. Is that fifty five? He doesn't have a gray hair on his head. I think it's fifty five. People don't believe he's fifty. Well, I don't have that much. Well, that's because you, you paint that. that no, I don't. That's painted. There's no. I just mind you. We're not going to go into that. Mine, mine falls out. It doesn't. It doesn't turn. It's gray. real. It falls out. It's I know it's memory. real. It's not memory. It's real. It's not really black, but it's really real. <laughs> this will be the last call, right? Uh-oh. Go ahead. You're on the air. Happy 50th birthday, Carl, and AARP is at age 50. Oh, oh it is. Oh, it's okay. 50? They keep lowering that. Okay. That means you get discounts and everything. That's excellent. I will be eligible then for AARP. I didn't know there was that low. I thought it was 55. And, and, and thank you for the birthday wish. Yeah. Are you still there, ma'am? Whoop, she... Yeah, he gets, he gets like, special discounts. Now. Oh, yeah, you do. Go to the movie theater, you get... Uh, Tell me you want a senior? Tuesday, senior day at the... I'm, I'm all the time at the... <laughs> I'm, I'm entering my... Uh, my it's six bucks every day at the, at the... Yeah. It's the second sunrise about to happen. I'm entering my second sunrise. There you go. He's got no gray hair. People don't even believe he's... Well, you won't be in the uh, Erie Readers. What is it? Uh, 30 <coughs> over 30 or something? 50 okay. It can't be... What do they call 40 that? 40 under 40. 40 under 40? No, I, I missed that before they... Well, I asked, yeah. I asked Bobby Mursky one day. I said, you know, because he was nominated. I said, well, what are you guys going to do when you hit 41? All right. They'll have to be the... Now you're the enemy, or are you going to change it to 45 under 45? Or? 41 under 41. 
<laughs> well, Kaz, I think we are off the air. I want to thank you. We're not off, but we're, we're, we're getting ready to. Mike's, Mike gave us the one-minute sign. We might be done already. Mike wants to stay another hour, he says. Let's take a doubleheader. Let's play. We'll, we'll take this one and go off the take air. It. Well, well, we better. Well, uh, Carl? Kaz, always a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having Once us. Once again, Carl Anderson, Anderson, my good friend John Steiner. Thanks for having us, Kaz. We appreciate it. We have fun when we come down here. Yes, we do. You know, whether people call or not, it's always good to touch base and catch up on some of the issues. Maybe we'll see you next week. Uh, maybe. We'll see. We, we should give some kudos to you, Kaz Kwiatowski. Why? You, you, for President, continuing the show. Somebody called you President. You know, if it wasn't for you, who would do this show? Seriously. You know, I remember I, I, I put it out there once. Yeah, and I don't I think. I started with Mario, <laughs> but not as much, you know. But right. Jimmy was always looking for somebody. and Mario and then Jimmy. I remember calling the show when Jimmy was on the show. And I remember when Mario did it, too. I, I tell people, you know, this Jim Thompson, he was a good A lot of people talk to me outside the show. I said, call here. You know, I need the callers. Right. But a lot of them will think about it. They, they're, like, shy, so. Yeah. A lot of people watch on replay, too. Yeah, and they, they nail me. Well, we talked about uh, DJ and I, yeah. about maybe taking a show to Channel 2 one night, once a month or something, yeah. and do it at night. Nick at night, right? Kaz at, Kaz night. at night. We tried. We're going to try it one you've time. You've been talking about that. You've, you've well, you Well, you know what the problem is? Getting getting funding. Because, uh, you know, we have to, you know, Cat TV right now is being challenged, so they just can't put us on for free. But I mean, why we not? I hope it works out for you. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually working with some of my underwriters on my radio show that I do. With, Your underwriters? Yeah. Well, if we can get some underwriters, we can. Oh, I see what you mean. You know, we can do a nice show like. Uh, well, here's what you do, Kaz. And honestly, I don't know why you don't do it on this show. I mean, you probably can't. But have like a local business. Uh, yeah, we can't do it on government. You can't channel, do it? No, I don't think so. Just have them sponsor the show. And then donate the money to uh, uh We have to check charity. into that one. But to charity. On, on Channel 2, you could. I'm not sure about this one. Cause yeah, and then just donate the money to charity. You could put a sign up there. and. It's like when I do my uh, ethnic show on Sunday. with Italian. The Italian Hour? Yeah, it's, uh, it's weird because yeah, there's rules and... That you can't cross, you know. Right. You've been telling me to come down there. I should come down there sometime yeah. and try it out. I used to do the Polish show, the Italian show, this one. And I said, man, I was going nuts. Well, see, I'm Polish and Italian, too. I'm Stein, Steiner's my last name. It's German. But, you know, I, my grandfather, I'm Perino. He knows the between a pierogi and a ravioli and what side yeah. down he's Perin, You know, Perino is my, you know, one of is my great-grandfather. Yeah, my great-grandfather's name. So I got a little bit of everything. So if you guys come on again, let's get some... Good stuff together. Excellent. Sounds we'll to think good. Thanks There's for having we, us. A lot we can talk about. Absolutely. Never a dull moment. That's true. All right. And with that, Carl, John. Cass, thanks. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on Erie's own Government Access Channel 9.